Hi, this is Joel Persinger. I'm the Gun Guy. Thank you very much for watching my videos and supporting my channel. I really do deeply appreciate it. I've got another in the collection of M14 variants that my buddy lent me. I did one the other day on the Springfield Armory uh, Scout rifle, which is he's had for many, many years. And, and this one is the Springfield Armory M1A, and then I've got an Arms Corps version as well. There are many companies that make these rifles, not just Springfield Armory. I think that's probably just the most noteworthy one in the sense that people know who they are. I am fascinated by these rifles primarily because, well, one of the things I really like about them is I'm, I'm partial to the uh, Garand style action anyway, so it doesn't matter to me which who makes the M14 variant. I like them. If they're made well, I like them a lot. And as I said, if you are interested in these at all and you don't want to buy one from Springfield, well, hallelujah, good for you, but there are other companies that make them and you may want to explore this as an, as an option depending on where you live within the state of California or another restrictive state or frankly anywhere in the United States. These guns are older. They are traditional rifles in the way that they're built as far as their stock dimensions are concerned and the type of stock. It's a wood stock. They, uh, they fire the 308 Winchester, which <laughs> is a great round for hunting and other things. I mean, you can take just about any game that walks in the United States with that round. Uh, with ease, it'll get you out there uh, to pretty darn good distances very accurately, and it hits really like a train. Now, for a defensive rifle, some people will call these defensive rifles. Some people call them all-purpose rifles. Some people call them modern sporting rifles. That's all euphemisms to get around the fact that they were originally designed to fight people, to fight with. They were designed as, as, as battle rifles, and that's essentially what these were in their military um, configuration with select fire and so on. This rifle is not select fire, obviously. It's a semi-automatic um, civilian version of an M14, and that's what they call theirs the M1A. Other companies like Arms Corps call it the M14. It just doesn't have the select fire component. Now, some of these, like the Springfield, have a cast receiver. Some of them have a more expensive receiver machined in a different way. And you'll see on the, uh, on the forums, people like the cast or they don't, and, and they'll say the reasons why. They think they're cheap or they don't think they are, or they think they last a long time or they think they don't. You, you can see opinions kind of going every which way where that's concerned. I have seen in a lot of these, and I've shot a lot of them by different manufacturers, Many of them with cast receivers, and I haven't run into one yet that, that anybody's told me they've had any trouble with. That doesn't mean they don't. I'm just telling you in my personal experience, I have not experienced that. I don't think civilians put the, the volume of ammunition through these that military do, and I think that's, that being the case, the cast receivers are probably fine. You're probably never going to shoot enough ammunition through the gun to ever cause a problem with it. Uh, that said, if you, want, if you don't want a cast receiver, understand you're going to pay a lot more for the gun because I don't care where you buy these or from whom, <laughs> they're pricey. I mean, they're pricey to me. I, I don't, you know, I'm, not, I'm not a rich man, so I don't have a bunch of money in my bank account. So to go out and drop you know, the kind of money on, to buy one of these that you've got to drop to buy, I, I'm probably not going to do it. Uh, if I had the money, I guarantee you I would because I really, I really like these types of rifles. They're very, very cool. Now, would I take one into a war zone in today's world? Uh, not probably. If there were other choices, probably not, only because it's really heavy and it's long. And it's, uh, I mean, these things are really, really long, as you can see. Uh, even up next to my M1 Garand, you can see that this thing is actually, uh, I mean, it's right up there even a little bit longer than the Garand, and it weighs about the same. Uh, the Garand is very, very heavy. And these rifles are very heavy, so if you were to actually have to cart them along as a foot soldier for any distance, I think the darn thing would wear you out. And then the ammo is heavy, but it's extremely effective. So could you use it? Are they used in modern military circles? Yeah, in some instances they are. I think the Navy still got some, and and I've seen uh, you know pictures of some folks using them uh, in military war zones. I don't. I was never in the military, so I wouldn't know you know that much about that. But do they do they serve still? Yeah, they do. Are they very effective? Yes. Um, are there perhaps more modern versions of them or different ways to build a, a rifle that would be just as effective that might fit modern warfare a little better? I suspect that there probably is. So if you were going to drop me in the middle of some foreign nation and have me walk for miles and miles and miles, would I take this rifle with me? No. Now, if I lived on a large piece of property where I had some expanse there and I wanted a fantastic truck rifle to take with me because I maybe I was in the southwest where I had 
cartels or something coming across the border and, and uh, causing trouble on my property, which, by the way, if, you, if you're not from the southwestern United States, is very, very common. And property owners down in those areas uh, deal with that on a regular basis. And sometimes those cartels are very, very well armed. Then would I want to maybe have a rifle like this that could reach way out there and still have a lot of muzzle energy when the round hits? Yeah, I probably would. I, I don't know that I would use an AR. I think something in 308 would suit that better. Would I use this as a self-defense rifle if I lived in an apartment building? Uh, no, <laughs> because it'll go through the whole stick and building. And likewise, if you live in an urban center of some sort, I'm not sure this is the best choice. It's too long. Uh, it's, I think, got way too much penetration for most applications in that particular environment. So I think it depends on the environment in which you're, it, which you're in if you're going to use it as a defensive rifle. If you're thinking about it for the zombie apocalypse, I just want to remind you that there are no such things as zombies. And so I don't think there will be a zombie apocalypse. But if you want to go to the range and shoot zombie targets, uh, that's a lot of fun. <laughs> I get it. So, you know, it's great for that, too. They are fantastic shooters. They are extremely accurate. They are, in, and in the case of the Springfield Armory guns, whether you like them or not, they, are, they have a reputation for being well-made and, and giving very, very good service and being very accurate. This one is no different. This one is a very accurate rifle. It runs like a Swiss watch. Uh, as I say, my buddy has had the, the three rifles for, I don't know, decades at this point. I think this one's probably you know, 15 or 20 years old. And he was kind enough to lend them to me. In fact, he came to the range and said, hey, I've got some, uh, I've got some M14 variants. You want to borrow them for video? And I was like, uh, yeah, that's the stupidest question anybody ever asked me because I get to shoot them. Uh, and this one is a lot of fun to shoot. Now, look, as I said, depending on where you live, would it make a good fighting rifle, a good defensive rifle to defend your family? Well, I think the, the answer is, yeah, yeah. It'd make a very good defensive rifle. I think the chief thing you have to worry about, obviously, is penetration because a 308 will go through an awful lot of stuff. And so you want to be mindful of that depending on where you live and what you're dealing with. Uh, but if you have to, you know, shoot at people behind a car or something like that or behind a block wall, this is going to get through that where the, you know, 556 five, probably won't. Obviously, I'm not going to go through an engine block, but it'll go all the way through the door panels on a car or through the, you know, various panels and through the other side quite easily as it would any other uh, 30 caliber high powered rifle. But again, the problem with that is that sometimes the penetration is more than you want and you've injured or killed somebody that you didn't intend to who was you know, in the house next door. So you have to be aware of that too. Now this particular rifle has a big old scope on it. I think it's a, this is a Bushnell scope and it's uh, three, it's, what is it? It's four to 16 power. So I just shot it at the four power and you can see from the 100 yard target that uh, even with my lousy shooting, it actually has a really good group, which was, uh, I think, outstanding for me. It was a pretty windy, stormy day. It, we had um, kind of a summer, uh, almost a monsoon going on. It was really, really hot, raining like crazy, and really windy all at the same time uh, when I was shooting. And even with the heavy wind, it's not going to affect it too much at 100 yards, but it still kept, the, kept it right on target, and, uh, and I thought it was awesome. So there you go. There's yet another California compliant or California legal opportunity for a fighting rifle in this state and I suspect in other states as well that are heavily restrictive and frankly if you're like me and you like I, I'm a hunter so I tend to go for traditional rifles and prefer them anyway and if that's what you prefer this is a great example of a way you can go I, I've said before I actually like my mini 14 more than I do my AR although I like my AR a lot it's the fact that the mini 14 is a traditional type rifle and it's a grand type rifle and I I really just gravitate toward those. I like them better. It's personal choice. It's personal preference. It's really not right or wrong. They're both outstanding. I just like these better personally. And not for any functional reason, just aesthetics and the way they feel and the way they, sh the way I, the way they feel when I shoot them and that kind of stuff. So it's, it's all um, subjective. It's, it's, uh, it, it, that's all it is. So don't freak out about your AR. Your AR is a great rifle, trust me. But these are really terrific too. So you may look at these and say, well, gee, this might be a great example of something I'd like to have if you have the budget uh, to look into them. And as I said, if you don't like the Springfield company because of the errors that they've made, I get it. I fully understand. But there are a number of great companies that make M14 variants. And I urge you, if this is something that's interesting to, interesting to you, to look into them because they are fantastic rifles. And probably, I would say, the softest shooting 308 I've ever shot. And I've shot a lot of 308s and 30 6s because I hunt. So I can tell you that the, you, know, you get a bolt gun in 308 and it'll smack the tar out of you after a few rounds. 
these things, you can shoot these all day. They're very soft shooting, uh, even if you don't want the, you know, the slip-on recoil pad, which I don't have on my M1 and probably wouldn't put on one of these, but it is there. It gives you a little more uh, length of pull. And as I've said in other videos, once I borrow a gun from someone, I don't make any changes to it. I shoot it just the way it is. It's their gun. It's, this belongs to a friend of mine. It's his gun, and I'm not going to make any changes to it. Well, anyway, there you are. Um, <laughs> hopefully, if you're still, still subscribed after I've mentioned Springfield Armory about four times in this video, I'm very, I'm very grateful. If you're not, I, I get it. I understand. And, uh, and I do wish you well one way or the other. People take a lot of heartburn with me if I say something that they don't like. I think sometimes we have to learn not to attack each other. And uh, well, let's, let's worry about attacking the anti-gunners and not beat up on each other. I think we'll get a lot more done that way. Thank you again for watching. Have a wonderful week. And please, be safe.